Hello, uh, today I'd like to talk about VR and why, as cool as it is, it may not be the greatest thing for developers to make a VR game right now. So firstly, uh, let me uh, caveat that with I'm very excited about VR. I have a virtual boy and loved using it until it gave me terrible, terrible eye aches. <coughs> And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, reading all the news coming out of GDC. Obviously, I'm not at GDC uh, right now, but I'm reading all the news, and all of it is, you know, about the new Morpheus, uh, Sony Morpheus, which is launching in the first half of 2016, and there uh, hasn't been too much news out of the Oculus camp, but I think Microsoft said HoloLens will support Xbox games, and... Um, the Valve HTC <coughs> uh, VR experience uh, is making headlines. Uh, so, I mean, uh, definitely there's a lot of excitement about game devel uh, developing on VR platforms and, uh, you know, reading all these headlines, I'm like, ah, I wish I were, you know, doing something in the, in the VR space. But, um, <coughs> despite that, I think, um, there are several trade-offs when you're you're developing a VR game, and and uh, a lot of it makes it hard uh, for someone uh, who's an indie developer. Because uh, one of the things, <coughs> you know, I read that that um, you know VR development is the wild west, and whoever creates the killer app, you know, will be a super millionaire. Um, which probably is true, uh, because it, 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 people haven't quite figured out all the rules, and so if you come up with a really clever idea that fits all the rules, um, you know, you can create the must-play VR game, um, which is really exciting, and, and I like the challenge, but then as a small business owner, I would rather um, <clears throat> have something that seems like a a sure thing, you know, something where I, I think the numbers will work out, um, and, I mean, obviously there's no sure thing in, in development, but I like to, um, you know, uh, sort of cover my bases. Like, one of the things with, with um, you know, Retrograde, we looked at mobile, I think, early on, and, and, uh, the hardware, uh, ramification, er, hardware, the, the hardware, Performance was really bad, so I, I don't know if you remember, but the original iPhone that you could develop for, people are saying, oh, it's like a Dreamcast plus a PlayStation 2 or a PSP or something, and or, I forget, but there were a lot of broad statements about how powerful it was, and it was not. Um, and so we sort of dismissed mobile, saying, you know, that's not going to work for the type of games we wanted to make. And then, of course, we made, you know, a game retrograde, and it took forever, and, you know, mobile seemed like a, uh, like a pretty good fit, uh, for retrograde. I mean, I'd really, I think, I think it would be fun on mobile, um, but the problem is we built all this tech, and, <clears throat> in a non-mobile friendly way, we focused on, you know, the higher end graphics and, uh, you know, trying to make the best looking PS3 game we could make, which, of course, ruins our chances of, you know, bringing it to mobile. And I mean, certainly I think, you know, Retrograde could work on, on you know, without completely watering down the graphics, um... Uh, on, on newer mobile things, but uh, it would be a ton of work because we built up all the, these tools and tech and stuff around uh, wor working in a certain way. Um, so with Never Ending Nightmares, we wanted to be able to bring the game to whatever platform uh, seemed to have the, the strongest chances of success. And, and, and you know, uh, Never Ending Nightmares would run on, on mobile ver uh, mobile devices, you know, if, if we wanted to work out touchscreen controls. And I don't know. Maybe we'll do that. I don't know. The mobile market is kind of scary, and certainly it's come a long way, you know, from when it was, uh, <clears throat> you know, the uh, 
best place for developers and and I mean that's that's really the problem is that um, you know it, it there's so much luck in trying to chase the next big thing and uh, a lot of people who who got into mobile you know maybe a little late are stuck with um, you know a huge cost for for uh, you know getting a paying user in terms of advertising and, and the market is, is not very favorable to to smaller developers right now and I mean certainly you know uh, VR um, may be a, a new market and, and uh, something that might be more indie friendly um, because uh, you know I don't think many uh, you know games with budgets of hundreds of millions of dollars or, or, or whatever, fifty million dollars, want to risk everything on, you know, unproven platforms. Because that's the thing, is that, you know, um, the, 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 the audience is, is, is in uncertain size, and certainly people say, you know, VR is going to be ubiquitous or whatever in five or ten years, but the problem is, what do you do, who do you sell your game to for the next five or ten years before it is ubiquitous? Um, and that that's always the challenge, is that it, it's a unproven market, no one knows how large the market is, and I think it's not going to be super huge because of the cost and the quality. Um, and I think there's a there's a couple different trade-offs. So certainly, the the cost. Uh, obviously, all the VR hardware is going to be uh, expensive, uh, except for maybe Google Cardboard. Um, but uh, certainly, you're you're limited as as what you know you can do graphically on on uh, cardboard. And I don't know uh, <laughs> if that's a viable platform. But I mean, that's the thing is you don't know if any of these things are a viable platform. Like, say you're focusing on you know, um, developing on the PC, do you know when Oculus is coming out? Do you know when the HTC Vive or whatever is coming out? I, I certainly don't, uh, which can make it difficult to, to market your product and, and come out in a time that makes sense. And, um, you know, the, the other thing is that, um, <clears throat> you know, VR tech you know, even as as cool as as the demos I've seen, and, and I haven't seen the latest demos, but I mean the the what I felt like was the the previous demos, you know, had potential, but they didn't really feel um, like it, it was super great or something that that consumers would would love. Uh, you know, nothing that I felt like oh, I gotta play this. You know, forever and ever, I gotta go buy out, go out and buy, you know, VR hardware. Um, but I think, like in looking at it, uh, and I think uh, I was just reading the quote. I think it was uh, Tim Sweeney or someone said that you know VR right now is like a Palm Pilot, and you know people will be excited about um, you know VR when it's a um, an iPad. Right, because I mean the the Palm Pilot, you know what a Palm Pilot can do versus what an iPad can do, you know there's this huge gulf, and uh, you know like if you look at the the technical limitations, uh, certainly uh, the resolutions on the displays uh, in for the ones with final spec uh, might not be good enough, because um, I mean like. Uh, on the ones y that I've seen, you can you can still see pixels at at 1920 by by 1080, um, and I mean I think I could even see pixels on the Gear VR, which is like 1440p. Uh, so uh, certainly that's a challenge, and maybe you know with some really good anti-aliasing that can be fixed, but. Fundamentally, the amount of work you you need to do to create a compelling uh, VR experience is is leaps and bounds over just creating a cool game. Um, the 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 or, or, sorry the Morpheus uh, they recommend like 120 hertz. So basically, like if you look at you, you're 
you're reducing your visual fidelity by half, right? Like, so say you have a PS4 game that runs at 1080p, 60, you're, which I think most of them run at 1080p, 30, uh, so you're probably reducing your visual fidelity. Like, let's take the order. So you take the order, you're reducing the visual fidelity by a quarter to get the order's frame rate up to, um, uh, up to 120 hertz. Then you might have additional penalties because you have to render from two viewports, which means there's additional costs of culling and, and uh, th transformations, which probably isn't isn't hugely significant in in uh on the ps4 hardware but i it's it's probably a non-zero um non-zero uh amount so basically you you may be stuck with like a ps3 game uh you know uh for your graphics and certainly palmer lucky in in his talk about vr at last year's steam dev day said you know a uh, you know, high frame rate, high resolution Minecraft uh, in VR is much more compelling than, you know, something that's chugging along, which I would totally agree, because if you don't have the head tracking, then it's it's really going to hurt your eyes and head, and, and the illusion of um, presence uh, won't be there. Um, but, but the thing is, that puts a lot of challenges on developers. Um, <laughs> because, uh, you know, again, like, most PS4 games aren't running at 60, and of course you can do, do Morpheus at 60, I don't think you'd want to do it lower, but, I mean, uh, everything I've heard, the, the higher the frame rate, the better for VR. Uh, so, I mean, that, that puts a lot of challenges on developers, and then the other thing is that it, it fundamentally limits the type of games you can make, um, which, you know, it, is... It's, it's a trade-off, but I think VR is more of a genre than it is necessarily the future of, of gaming. Um, because if you look <clears throat> over the history of gaming, you know, there's always new genres that are created, but I don't think the old genres really go away. Like, I don't think people are going to want to stop playing first-person shooters and... Uh, first-person shooters, um, a lot of them don't work very well in VR, um, because of the way you move in a first-person shooter. You can strafe and circle strafe and backward strafe and all these things which are unrealistic movement, and, and, uh, you know, that's very, uh, disorienting for VR. You can, uh, you know, platformer games, uh, you know, Mario, right? Like, the Mario games are still awesome, I love them. And, uh, you know, I don't think they'll ever stop being enjoyable or I'll ever stop wanting to play those. And that's not something that can really translate well uh, into VR. And certainly with, with never-ending nightmares and, you know, we want to show a character and uh, we want to, uh, you know, create these stylized worlds. I think that would be a lot harder to do in VR. I mean, I think it would be cool. Um, but I think it's, it would be fundamentally changing the game into a game that, that we wouldn't want to, or we, we wouldn't really be, it wouldn't be necessarily worth the risk. I mean, given that, you know, our game would not be as cool to people without VR, and um, especially, you know, when there there's all these, like, VR-specific controllers and things, um, so, I mean, it, it seems like VR is a platform and a genre, and you have to design your game for that, and, uh, it's not just as simple as, as turning on stereoscopic rendering, um, but certainly I'm excited about the future, and, you know, I'd love to just experiment with, with, uh, VR, um, you know, because even with with a 2D-based game like Never Ending Nightmares, I think it might be cool just to sort of block out your the exterior. I don't know if it really counts as VR, maybe. I don't know. Who knows what VR really is? But, uh, you know, just the idea of having the goggles and constraining your view to just focus and, and just, you know, cut out all the outside distractions, I think that's uh, really cool, uh, and, and something that, that, uh, you know, never any nightmares could benefit from in terms of VR, so, anyway, I mean, certainly I'm excited about VR, I don't think I'm gonna, you know, jump, 
uh, and make a VR only game yet, uh, even even though it's it's tempting. But uh, what do you guys think about VR? Are you gonna drop <laughs> hundreds of dollars on a headset? Are you gonna buy them all? Uh, Anyway, uh, feel free to leave a, a comment uh, with your thoughts. Anyway, thanks for watching.